people have been messaging me and they've been asking, did you hear what David said? He was on X on one of these spaces and I'm thinking, well, what did the guy say, you know? And he said, well, Ripple hasn't had the traction with payments that they, well, hope to have. And this shouldn't be some great uh, revelation here, let's be honest. When you look at the top cryptocurrencies in the world today, the hot areas of crypto, I'll tell you what it's not, it's not payments. It's all either layer one smart contracts, essentially Ethereum competitors, or applications built on those blockchains. Not a lot of people out there trying to do payments. And there's a lot of reason for that. And it's not that Ripple's dominating in secret in the background. Look, you know, if that was the case, people would know about it and would be trying to compete there. It's just not where it's at today. Now, XRP is a special animal and it can have success. And I believe the pendulum will swing back and payments will be a hot sector of crypto. That's just not where we find ourselves right now. And we do see Ripple pivoting in a lot of ways to different use cases. Look, Ethereum went through this. What was the main driver of value for the Ethereum token in 2017? ICOs. Now their problem was not that it didn't work or it wasn't successful, it became pretty much illegal. So you had to close that down and come up with a new value driver. And for Ethereum, that was DeFi. And when it first emerged, not everyone was sure if that was going to be successful and anyone would actually use these systems. And boy, has it been. It was this you know, weird situation where you could do, build anything you want with the programmability of Ethereum, but we didn't know what we wanted to build, what the future would look like. But it had the capability and people figured out how to use that blockchain in a useful way. XRP has a lot of capability, a lot of useful capability. We got to figure out exactly how people will use it. But unlike Ethereum, Ripple and other people, they don't have to pivot from payments. We could just add extra use cases on top. Now, in this interview, the question was stated as, you know, it's tough because of all the regulations. And that's true to an extent, but I think it's bigger than that. When you look at what happened with MoneyGram, that didn't fail because of regulations. It just takes an awful lot of liquidity, and it's just not there right now. And just working with MoneyGram on choice corridors, they were losing millions of dollars a quarter. They didn't make MoneyGram's payments faster and cheaper. They actually cost more money than they were saving, and they had to reimburse MoneyGram for that activity. And so if you think, well, what would happen if every bank in the world went live on every corridor or even some small percentage of that? Well, if you had to pay money, Graham, two, three, four million a quarter, what would that cost? Like, it's not possible. It's just not there. They cannot do it today. So, yes, hostile regulators, that does make it tough for real businesses like Ripple to go out there and grow their services. And yes, banks are very conservative and they ain't just going to, on the drop of a dime, transfer, you know, all their systems over to this blockchain system. All of that is true, but I think, you know, the hurdles in front of us are even greater than that. If all the companies like MoneyGram and other money transmitters and everyone could transfer over, and they have instant and free payments and there's enough liquidity to do so and it grows and it works, you know, your heavy hitters are going to have to transfer over. They would do so in time. We're not there yet. The problem is more than just hostile regulations in old school banks. You know, There's more to it than that. There's a very technical and really market limitation there that stops this from being a reality today. But it's not all doom and gloom. The leader in institutional crypto payments is Ripple, without a doubt. XRP is central to their business operation. If someone has success in payments, it's likely to be Ripple. And I still say the genesis problem of blockchain, a peer-to-peer -peer payment system without an intermediary, that is not something you give up on. That you say, you know what, well, it's not the hot topic in crypto. Let's just throw that to the side. No, you go after that with everything you got. But I think that, you know, XRP has been given a pass to a lot of other blockchains without competition to go out and take over many sectors where it's ridiculous. There's a lot of capability here. And I think if you add AMMs, a stable coin or two, some bridges that hook into other blockchains, bring on interesting assets, well, you can compete in a lot of areas. You've been given out a free pass and all that activity, value, and liquidity will also help you build out your payment systems. It's only sensible. I'm sick of this just saying we're just for cross-border payments. It's nonsense. 
And guess what? As you have success in all these ancillary use cases, it's going to help you do probably the most important, which is, again, those peer-to-peer -peer payments, trustlessly flowing, low cost, high speed, all of that stuff. If they can build up that liquidity on the decentralized exchange and you can do a lot of this activity on chain instead of on exchanges, I think it will help their ODL or their Ripple payments or whatever they're calling it now. And that might be a game changer as well. And we should be trying to put as much on chain as we feasibly can, especially when it makes sense and it makes things more decentralized, cheaper, and faster. The original idea is, well, banks will hold XRP direct. And if they do that, it might be game over. We'd be able to do what we want today. But that ain't happening. We understand that now. Uh, you know, then we said ODL. You're buying and selling on exchanges, and that adds complications and costs. I think if we get a lot of that on chain, it could be a real game changer for XRP adoption and not just Ripple use cases. I think it'll bring a lot of other builders into this space. XRP, it's not just for the institutions or the banks or the governments. Anyone can use it. And a lot of times it's easier to get regular retail users to try out these apps and say, you know what? Hey, it makes my payment fast, cheap. It helps me do this transaction. Like if it works, they'll adopt it. I mean, good Lord, people used all sorts of, you know, silly systems last bull run that didn't work, that were downright dangerous. You don't think they're going to use a finely tuned and safe and valuable application that's built on the XRP ledger? Of course they will. We're past this big, you know, battle with the SEC, even though it's ongoing. What really matters? XRP itself is not a security. We're by that argument, and so I think this is a good time to think about all these issues deeply and how we proceed into the future, how we can compete in the crypto landscape. XRP is going to do great. It may not play out the exact way that many people expected it to, but you ain't going to complain when that token's going up in value. Let me know what you think down below, and as always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Link.